Hello, my name is Marco Balia. I am an artificial intelligence researcher working in the hospital clinic in Barcelona. And I am going to present this work that we've done in collaboration with the Polytechnic University of Catalonia that is called Uncertainty Estimation for Deep Neural Networks for Dermoscopic Image Classification, in which we try to use uncertainty metrics in order to predict error-prone samples at the output of the classifier. And also we try to see if these metrics can be used for out-of-distribution detection. So first of all, let's start discussing a little bit of the current situation of artificial intelligence in healthcare, especially in skin imaging. What we see is that there are a lot of uh, systems that are very high performing, but the reality is that we are not seeing uh, too many clinical applications of these systems in the real world. Um, I would say that one of the reasons uh, for that is uh, the fact that uh, the majority of artificial intelligence systems uh, cannot work, uh, cannot provide uncertainty metrics. So uh, basically, um, they have no metric that they can uh, give to the uh, person or to a doctor that is using the system that is related to the confidence of the model in its predictions. Um, uncertainty basically is the variation of the model's output as a set of uh, different factors, and we can divide uncertainty into epistemic uncertainty and aleatory uncertainty. Epistemic uncertainty is uh, related uh, to the variability in the model's outputs. So, uh, for example, we can train very different models, we can select different weights for our models, and obviously the output of the model will change as a function of the set of weights that we are selecting. So this uh, variation in the output is the uh, epistemic uncertainty of the neural network. Um, the aleatory uncertainty is related to the outputs, uh, uh, sorry, to the inputs of the neural network. Um, we can uh, uh, take images uh, with uh, very different configurations. For example, we can uh, take images with different cameras, with different lighting conditions, with different orientations, and the variation on the model's outputs uh, related to this variation in the model's input is what we call the aleatory uncertainty. Um, a method that we can uh, use in order to model the um, the uncertainty of the neural networks are the Bayesian neural networks. And in this formulation, uncertainties are formalized as probability distributions over the model parameters in the case of the epistemic uncertainty or over the model inputs in the case of aleatory uncertainty. So instead of having, in the case of epistemic, instead of having um, fixed, a fixed set of weights, uh, what we are having for every weight is a probability density, density function and when we want to compute the output of the neural network, what we do is to estimate over this uh, probability density functions of the weights of our neural network, and what we get at the output is a uh, probability density function of, of uh, the uh, prediction. Um, this information is the one that we can use in order to, for example, say what is the variance of uh, our uh, model uh, for that prediction, but the problem is that computing this uh, integration is not uh, is not uh, mathematically possible, and instead uh, researchers have been using Monte Carlo sampling in order to integrate and uh, approximate this output. Um, basically, Monte Carlo sampling uh, consists of uh, taking multiple evaluations of the neural network with different set of weights, uh, with uh, and uh, in order to define the set of weights, we're using a, a random distribution. Um, uh, these researchers from dropout as a Bayesian approximation uh, demonstrated that we can use dropout during test time in order to uh, perform an approximation of a Bayesian neural network. And basically what you do is just uh, forward the same input of the neural network several time, times, but we are using a dropout during test time. So this means that we are disconnecting neurons, uh, uh, neurons randomly for, from the neural network. Um, this is very similar to uh, doing a Monte Carlo sampling with a binomial distribution, and we can use this to um, approximate uh, or model the epistemic uncertainty of the model. In the case of the uh, aleatory uncertainty, uh, we can use, uh, once again, uh, what we do is to uh, forward the, the input through the neural network uh, several times, but this time instead of using dropout, what we are using is data augmentation. So we are using test time data augmentation, which uh, basically uh, performs an approximation of the aleatoric uncertainty uh, of the neural network. So uh, we are uh, 
putting the same images with different rotations, different translations, and different colors, and that way we can approximate which would be the uh, way that the neural network would behave as a function of these different uh, data augmentations. Um, of course, uh, these Monte Carlo methods need uh, some way to aggregate uh, the different metrics that we are obtaining, and we've done that in this uh, paper with the entropy of the of the uh, predictions and the variance of the predictions of the several predictions uh, from the Monte Carlo uh, sampling. And also we have used the Patacharya coefficient, which was proposed in this paper, quantifying uncertainties for, of deep neural networks in skin lesion classification. We have um, uh, performed our experiments in the IC Challenge uh, 2018. Uh, which is a, a data set of uh, image uh, skin lesion classification and is composed of over 10,000 images. And also we have done our experiments in the IC Challenge 2019. And in this case, the test data set contains uh, categories which are not seen in the training data set. So in this case, we can use uh, this uh, challenge in order to test if uncertainty metrics uh, can be used for out of distribution detection or outlier detection. Our experiments are based on the efficient net architecture and we have performed uh, data augmentation during training, uh, rotations, crops and uh, um, color jitters. And we have used Adam optimization with a base learning rate uh, of 0 0.001. And then we, can, we have used Costina annealing warm based starts in order to, to as, as an optimizer, as, as a scheduler for the learning rate. Um, to account for the class imbalance that, was, what, that were present in our data sets, we have used weighted sampling. We have divided our experiments into different sets. In the first set, we want to determine if we can use the uncertainty metrics uh, in, uh, in order to detect the error-prone samples at the output of the classifier. Uh, in this case, we have used the training sets of the 2018 and 2019 challenges. And during inference, we forward every image 100 times to the neural network using test augmentation, uh, test time dropout, or both uncertainty te techniques at the same time. In the second experiment set, we want to see if the uncertainty metrics can be used in order to detect outlier samplers or out of distribution samplers. And in this case, for the 2018 uh, challenge, what we do is to remove two classes from the training set. So we remove the vascular and the dermatofibroma class uh, from the training set. And we use these classes to see if the uncertainty metrics are higher for these outlier classes. In the IC Challenge 2019, we use the training data set as provided, and we upload the predictions to the um, ICIC leaderboard, and we obtain the metrics for the unknown category. In these figures, we uh, can see uh, the different uncertainty metrics that we have des described, and also the different aggregation uh, metrics that we have described. Um, as a function of the correct and incorrect samples at the output of the classifier. So what we can see that is that there is a trend uh, for the uncertainty uh, metrics to be higher at uh, the output of the classifier for the samples that are not correct. Um, also, a side result that we have seen, and this is something that uh, most of people already know, is that uh, you can uh, uh, obtain a higher accuracy when you are using uh, test augmentation. Uh, but in this case, we have uh, performed some experiments also using uh, Monte Carlo dropout. And we have seen that uh, test augmentation is helping uh, to obtain a higher accuracy at the output of the classifier. But this is not the case for Monte Carlo dropout. Also in these figures, you can see the evolution of the balanced accuracy as we discard the samples that have the higher uncertainty. What we see is that we, as we keep discarding samples from the uh, test data set, we see that the balanced accuracy keeps growing. So with this, we conclude that the uncertainty metrics are higher for the error-prone samples at the classifier and that they can be used in order to uh, determine uh, if a sample is prone to have an error or not. In the second set of experiments, uh, we see that the uncertainty metrics are also higher for uh, the 
uh, outlier samples. So in this case, we are seeing that the results for the ICE challenge 2018, and we see that all the uncertainty metrics show to be higher at the output of the classifier for the samples from the outlier class that were the vascular class and the dermatofibroma class. We have also included some samples from the ImageNet uh, to see how the uncertainty metrics would work in a set of images that is completely different from the training set. And as we can see, the uncertainty metrics are also higher for those, but uh, we also see that the, this uh, class or these images uh, don't have uh, the uncertainty metrics as high as the, one, as, as the uncertainty metrics for the outlier class. Um, then we also compute the area under the curve for out of distribution detec detection. And we conclude that the combination of Monte Carlo dropout and test augmentation is the best solution uh, or, or has the higher predictive uh, value for out of distribution detection. In the case of the IC Challenge 2019, we use the same uncertainty metrics that we have described, and we uh, try to search for a threshold value with which we can decide uh, that a sample is pertaining to the out of distribution category or the outlier category. Uh, to do so, uh, we compute the intersection between the uh, uncertainty metrics for the validation set and for the test set and use this value as, as a threshold. Um, we then upload the results to the IC Challenge 2019 live leaderboard, and we can see that all the metrics are predictive uh, for the um, outlier class or for our distribution detection. Um, but the one that worked the best for us was the, uh, to use the combination of the Monte Carlo dropout and also the test augmentation uh, and using variants as the aggregating metric. Um, however, we see that uh, still uh, we are not having a very a high balanced accuracy overall and uh, selecting samples for the outer distribution is a trade-off. To conclude, we would like to say that uncertainty samples are indeed predictive or of, sorry, uncertainty metrics are predictive uh, of uh, the error prone samples of the classifiers. So you, we can use uh, these metrics to uh, report if a sample is uh, probably wrong at the output of the classifier. Um, and, then, and then that we can also use these metrics uh, to detect out of distribution samples. Um, however, we would say that this method is uh, not ideal and that uh, there is probably a need to keep researching in this area. Thank you so much.